Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. I'm Kathleen Frankert, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the Center, and I'm so pleased to have you joining us here today on our Facebook live stream, via YouTube, or on our podcast. And by the way, if you're on Facebook, we invite you to like us and even share this link with people that you know or even start a watch party. I greet you this morning with Namaste. Namaste is the Sanskrit greeting that means the divinity in me recognizes and greets the divinity in you. You know, our doors may be temporarily closed, but our hearts are wide open to you. The good news is that social distancing does not have to mean spiritual or social isolation. We can remember the truth of our oneness with all of life in every moment. We can still maintain community while being apart as we are doing right now in the shared time together via technology. I extend a special welcome to those who may be visiting us for the first time via this platform. We hope to see you in person when we are able to meet again at our lovely Southgate Community Center in Sarasota. Each Sunday, we read together our community declaration of what we're all about here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. The words now are appearing on your screen from our website, and I invite you to say with me these words to bring it to life for yourself and for our community. We are a spiritual center that honors all paths to God. Ours is a positive message inspiring our possibilities and offering spiritual tools for transforming our lives and helping to make the world a better place. Here, we can find peace of mind, belonging to a spiritual home, and a personal relationship with the God of our understanding. We are here to discover what we already know. And while we're showing you the website, I'll just point out a couple of things. Our website is www.cslsarasota.com. At the top of the page, you can, you'll see that you can send a request for prayer support by, put, by clicking that green button. At the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we believe in the power of affirmative prayer and in knowing spiritual truth for resolving life's challenges. We are blessed to have three licensed spiritual practitioners in our center, Jaron Nelson, Jim Grove, and me, who are always available to know and affirm spiritual truth with you and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. Also on the website, you can sign up to receive an email newsletter from us about everything that's going on at the center. So please take advantage of that. So I have a couple of announcements to share. I'm pleased to share that beginning this Thursday, we will have a new weekly opportunity to meet for prayer and spiritual support via conference call. It's called Power Up and will be co-led by licensed spiritual practitioner, Jaron Nelson and me. This is a great way to plug in and supercharge your spiritual connection and your spiritual practice as we navigate these challenging times, all in about 30 minutes. During the group calls, there will be time for making prayer requests an affirmative prayer will be offered as we join in community. There's no charge to participate and you may attend every week or whenever you need. Operators and spirit will be standing by each Thursday for you at four o'clock. To attend each week, you will call the number on the screen, 717-275-8940, and then the passcode, which is 827 3943. This is a secure line. It's all confidential. If you have questions, please email Jaron or me. Our addresses are on the screen. Or click on the practitioner button under the staff box on our website. And our addresses are there as well. Also continuing every Thursday evening, we host Spiritual Living Circles. Everyone is invited to join in a one-hour discussion and faith lift 
that is led by Jim Grove, a licensed practitioner here. Discussions each week focus on an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. And if you're new to the circle or the magazine, you will receive a free six month subscription. Our next circle is Wednesday, April 8th, and we'll meet via the Zoom online conference room technology. If you would like to participate, participate, please email Jim at the email address on the screen to receive, to receive the Zoom conference invitation and this week's discussion questions. And that concludes our announcements for this week. So now is the time for our prayer and meditation. So I invite you to truly take a deep cleansing breath and settle in for this time of prayer and meditation. I invite you, if it's comfortable, to close your eyes or just have a soft focus and breathe. Allow yourself to let go of tension and worry. And in the words of this music you are about to hear, know that all is well. I can rest. I am safe. All is well. settle further into this comforting truth. The one infinite life and substance is the only infinite life and substance in existence. And this life and this substance is my life now. As I know this for me, I know it for all hearing these words. This truth reaches beyond appearances of disruption and disease beyond circumstances or feelings of separation. And so too do I know and affirm that each one is lifted and held in the loving embrace of this life and substance. Each is safe, whole, at peace. Each one experiences the spacious loving essence that is always operating and cooperating with life for our greatest and highest good. Together, as we lift our consciousness to this greater awareness of spirit, it creates a vast ripple extending out into the world. For we are one, we are connected. Knowing this is the absolute truth, I accept the influx of God's grace and blessings for me and for each one. I affirm that all needs are met and all are basking in the loving grace of spirit. Knowing this perfect life and substance energy is working for everyone in divine time and order, 
I let go, I let God, and so it is. Thank you, Fawnie Frost and Bob Teasdale. We're pleased to welcome back Fawnie Frost as our guest soloist today. She's been with us many times before and we are always blessed by her beautiful voice and message. Today, she is singing, We Are All Angels. Please sit back and enjoy this beautiful reminder of the truth. Welcome, Fawnie.
What a beautiful message for all of us. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our founder and spiritual director, Reverend Karen Wolfson. Her message today is entitled, What Are You Noticing? Welcome, Reverend Karen. Good morning. We are all angels. Don't you love that? We only have one wing and we truly do need each other to fly. And as the song says, there are angels in our midst, but our lives get so busy that we simply don't notice. And yet when we do take the time to look around, we see sweet angels smiling at us everywhere. And as the song says, everywhere at any time, I only need to open up my eyes and see we're all angels. We need each other to fly. And at this more point, I want to give a great big shout out to the angels that are taking care of us on so many levels all over our country. The medical workers, the first responders, the scientists, the people who are working in the grocery stores and the other places that we patronize just to keep going. Thank you. Our enormous, enormous thanks and appreciation. You are truly our angels. Well, I'm Reverend Karen Wolfson, and this morning I'm feeling so blessed that you and I are with each other, each of us with one wing, so we need one another to fly. We're here to lift one another's spirits and, um, and just chat for a little bit in the midst of this unprecedented, at least in our lifetime, pandemic. I want to spend this time with you coming from my office this time with a cup of coffee and I hope you have your coffee or your tea too. And I wanna share some thoughts with you that I hope will be uplifting and encouraging to you because frankly, I'm sharing from things that are uplifting to me. So first of all, let me just check in with you and ask, how are you feeling? How are your spirits? Uncertain, worried, fearful, feeling overwhelmed with it all, powerless, more, you know, that's understandable, you're human. And you know what else? I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you having those same feelings and bouncing around back and forth between those and tapping into my own spiritual tools that I know will get me through, that I know have gotten me through many, many other times of great uncertainty and loss and devastation. And I think most of you have been through something like this before too. Not exactly like this, it's so unique. But we know, we know there are things that have gotten us through before and they will this time, I have no doubt. So I don't have answers to the big questions, you know, the ones like how could this be happening and how bad will it get? How long will it last and will there be more? But I have learned that when I get caught up in that swirl of questions that just don't seem to have any answers, I can ask different questions. And so today, that's what I'd like to share with you, to lift your spirits and remind you of what you already know. Here's the question. Here is the one question I'm suggesting that you ask and that I find helps me so much when I ask. What am I noticing? Ask yourself, what am I noticing? Now that can seem like a pretty mundane and trivial question, but stay with me. And you just might find that as you answer this question for yourself, it's going to provide you with some strength and guidance and even joy and peace as you navigate these coming days. I've discovered that a lot of my stress is relieved when I notice that 
I'm what I'm habitually and automatically noticing and then I shift my attention to intentionally notice things that I have become oblivious to so something happened this week that reminded me of this this business of what am I paying attention to what am I noticing I was having a physical therapy appointment and as I was talking with the therapist our conversation drifted toward places we like to shop for food and he mentioned a lovely little neighborhood market, a very specialty market, and I was very interested to hear what more he had to say about it. And I said, well, I'd like to, I'd like to find that market and, and check it out. Where is it located? And he told me, and I was astonished, because I have driven by that place thousands of times in the 25 years I have lived in Sarasota. It's on a very busy, well-traveled road in Sarasota, I have never noticed it. I never noticed. What are you noticing? Why didn't I notice? Well, I wasn't looking for it. And of course, there are so many other larger, noisier, busier businesses and other things vying for my attention along that road. I was just oblivious to that market. Oh my, that dawned on me. That's so similar to what we're going through today. What are you noticing? What's vying for your attention these days? And of course, likely we're pulled toward noticing every day the dire news about the spread of the virus, the reported statistics of the numbers that are of individuals that are impacted. You know, it's, it's seductive. And of course, I want to add here, be a good citizen. We want to listen for the information that tells us what we can do to, to do our part to mitigate, to prevent as much as possible an even greater spread of this. And so, of course, listen and get good information and let's all be good stewards together. But the reports are chilling and they're heartbreaking day after day. And I am not minimizing at all the painful impact on so many, so many lives. But also, after listening and obtaining the important and useful information about what we can do individually, you and I have a choice. At that point, we have a choice of where to direct our attention. We have a choice about what to notice. So I came across this pit from uh, one of our great spiritual masters, Dr. Seuss, and it said this, think left and think right, think low and think high. Of the thing, oh, the things you can think up if only you try. Note, and I'm going to change that a little bit now to say for today. Notice left and notice right. Notice low and notice high. Oh, the things you can notice if only you try. So today I have three suggestions, three things to notice, to pay attention to, to look at. What are you noticing? First of all, Notice, look behind the appearances. Secondly, look beyond. Look beyond the appearances and the projections to the possibilities. And the third is look inside. Look inside yourself. So first of all, looking behind the appearances and the conditions. You know, in our material world, it can seem very counterintuitive to suggest that there's more than meets the eye. But there is. A simple example is a plant growing. You plant a seed and uh, you don't see a thing for a long time sometimes. But you don't waste time saying, well, I can't see anything happening and so that must mean nothing is happening. You do everything you can to create a place and a space that supports the growth of that little seed. You can't even see it. So here's what I mean by noticing what's happening despite appearances and conditions. First of all, let's notice the indications of so much good that is happening. Notice that behind the appearance of total devastation and despair, there are countless generous acts of kindness in communities and neighborhoods during this time. And you know, whenever I turn my attention to these, even though I might not notice them at first because they're not in the forefront, but whenever I turn my attention to these and notice them, my heart is lighter immediately and I smile and I feel hopeful and I remember, I remember that all is well. 
Another thing to notice, despite the appearances, despite the conditions, is the emerging blessings that are hidden behind the conditions. The conditions of being quarantined, and of course the conditions of knowing how many people are vulnerable, are suffering. Father Richard Hendricks put it this way. He said, there is fear, yes. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But he said, they say that in Italy, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of families around them. They say that in the west of Ireland, a young woman is passing out flyers with her number so that neighborhood elderly folks and, and people in need may have someone to call on. And all over the world, he writes, people are slowing down and they're reflecting and looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are noticing our interconnectedness despite how little control we really have right now. They are noticing what really matters, the power of prayer, meditation, kindness, and caring. So what are you noticing? What is your attention? Where is your attention? You know, in science of mind, our philosophy, excuse me, I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. In science of mind, as all the great spiritual traditions teach us to look upon, it, we learn that we must look beyond appearances for a very powerful and potent reason, not just because it's sort of a feel-good thing, but because appearances and conditions have limitations. And on the invisible side of life, the power of God does not have limitations. Jesus, the great master teacher, said, there, certainly there is reality. He did not deny the reality. In fact, he said, you are in the world, but not of the world. So he did not deny the reality of appearances. He merely told us not to think that that was all there is. He said things like, fear not, like all things are possible. I am with you always. Trust the unseen. And the architect of our philosophy of science of mind, Dr. Ernest Holmes, summed it up like this. Things crowd in on us until we lose sight of the greatest of all gifts. The simple, spontaneous joy of a trust in the invisible power of good that is able, ready, and willing to meet all of our needs. We're reminded to look behind the appearances, knowing the greater truth of that good, and that ultimately life is happening for us. Life is not against us. We know that there is only one life. That life is God. That life is your life and my life now, and by its very nature, life must support life. Life must support itself. Its only intention is to support us. In the words of Hazmat Khan, there's a little bit of wisdom here because sometimes even knowing that life is for us doesn't always look that way. But again, here's what I'd, where I'd like you to notice something beyond appearances, or notice things in a different way. I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to learn to solve. I asked for prosperity and God gave me a brain and brawn to work. I asked for courage and God allowed me challenges to overcome. I asked for love and God gave me people to help. I asked for favors and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing that I wanted, but everything I needed. So when you turn your attention from appearances and conditions and notice these things, good things that are happening, the hidden blessings, the power greater than all appearances, it's there to support you, you'll find that your anxiety and your fear recede into the background and you're going to find that you have a renewed sense of possibility, of strength, of peace, and of joy. So the second thing to notice, to look at, 
is look beyond what's happening now. You know, this too shall pass. So why not notice what's possible at the end of the story? I love what I saw on Facebook. It said this, I know this, that when this ends, and it will, every game will sell out, every restaurant will have a two-hour wait, every kid will be glad to be back in school, everyone will love their job, the stock market will skyrocket, every other house will get draped in toilet paper, and we'll all embrace and shake hands. That's going to be a pretty good day. Notice how you feel when your attention is on that, when you notice that. Instead of, well, I know it's so tempting to dwell on the imaginary, discouraging, worst-case, what-if scenarios that are offered to us on a daily basis. But what if we did, as author Melody Beatty suggests, what if you knew for certain that everything you're wor you are worried about today will work out fine? What if you knew the future was going to be good and you would have an abundance of resources and guidance to handle whatever comes your way? What if you knew everything was okay and you didn't have to worry about a thing? What would you do then? Well, you'd probably relax and enjoy living. And here's the thing. When I'm relaxed in that way and realizing and trusting and, and noticing what exists behind the appearances and conditions, when I'm noticing that there is life and God and spirit supporting me, I'm able to be more generous, more supportive to others, more caring, more um, outside myself, more in that role of we, what we all are, that angel with just one wing. Here's the thing, where attention goes, energy flows. Where attention goes, energy flows. Why does that matter? Because energy creates according to wherever we direct it. So what you're noticing is where your attention is. And what you're noticing is creating more of the same. This is more than smiley faces and cheerful thoughts. What you and I are noticing is energetically creating more of the same, and that is powerful. The third thing to notice is what's inside yourself. Look inside. It's like when you tap on the camera icon on your device and all of a sudden it does a 180 and there you are looking at you. It can be a little startling. But I'm suggesting that rather than staring at everything going on outside of yourself on the outside of that camera, look inside yourself. Do a selfie, an internal selfie. Look inside yourself to the presence and the power of the infinite and realize that you are never ever alone and that you are abundantly supported with strength and resourcefulness and peace and so much more. As one of our early New Thought writers said, cease struggling with outside conditions and turn to the infinite source within. The floodgates are now opened and good is poured forth into your experience. And Dr. Holmes, wrote it this way, he said, think of yourself as being in partnership with this divine presence and its creative nature. Learn to trust this presence as you trust the simple fact that you are living. Don't be afraid to throw yourself in complete abandonment into its soft embrace, for it is closer to you than your very breath and nearer to you than your hands and your feet. It is right where you are. If all we're noticing is the frenzies going on outside us, goodness, we can be so distracted and we can be so oblivious to our inner resources, our guidance, our connection with God, the one life, whatever name you want to call it. And yet remember, the infinite is, well, infinite. And that presence, that infinite presence is the source of every single thing we need. As Dr. Holmes writes, no matter what our emotional storm or what the outer situation may be, there's always something hidden in our inner being that has never been violated. We may stumble, but always there is that inner voice forever whispering within, all is well.
and all is well. On the invisible side of life, the magnificent, magnanimous side of life that informs us, that energizes us, that created us, and that supports us. All is well. So I invite you to ask yourself this question whenever you're feeling overwhelmed with fear and anxiety during all of this that is happening. Ask yourself, what am I noticing? And by the way, it's okay to notice your feelings and feel them. Don't shame yourself for having all of the feelings that I have described earlier. I have them too. Let's not, let's not be tough on ourselves about that. Let's feel them, acknowledge them, love ourselves for being human, and then ask, now what can I notice instead? Oh, and by the way, if all else fails, I give you permission to notice what's on Netflix for a while too. At least it will get your attention onto something, um, well, other than, you know what I mean. So even occasionally, as I wrap this up, I want to invite you to really consider a bodacious, bodacious idea, which you're going to hear Thawney and Bob sing about, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to speculate or contemplate what hasn't happened yet. I'll put the whole thing in spirit's hands. I'll see you next week. What are you noticing? Fonnie and Bob for that perfect reminder. Now it's time for our offering. During these times of unprecedented challenges, we realize more than ever how interconnected and interdependent we are. It is a time for supporting each other. We at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota are here to support you in prayer, inspiration, encouragement, 
and especially opportunities for vir virtual community and connection. We thank you for your generous and heartfelt financial support so that we can continue to support you. There are three simple ways to do this. On the screen you can see from our website, you can click on the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or your own personal credit card. Or you may choose to set up automatic uh, drafts from your bank via online banking. Or you may mail a check to the center at the address from the website. So now I invite you to take your virtual gift in your hand and place it over your heart, blessing it as you share it. And know this, my gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper. And the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. And I invite you to repeat after me, I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. And now in this quiet time of reflection, let us remember how blessed we are as we hear the music written by Karen Drucker. I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into our day and the week ahead, affirming that we do so in health, in safety, in love, and in peace. And we will anchor that with the closing song, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. that was meant to be with God our Creator we are family let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be my moment now Let this be my solemn vow To take each moment and live each moment In peace eternally Let there be peace on earth And let 